Hello ACCA students, welcome back. My name is Steve and this video is specifically for performance management students. Today we will look at the learning curve and we will look at pricing, specifically the economist's approach to pricing. And we'll explore these, pro these topics by looking at question heat from the June 2011 exam. You should have these in your question books and I've also given you a link so that you can download the question. The link is right below. So give the question a try and then come back here and we will compare our work. And if you find this video useful, please feel free to give it a like. All right, let's jump in and get started. Let's look at the first requirement, everybody. First requirement, what's the verb? Establish the demand equation for air conditioner units. Okay, so they'll give you that formula, but you should also know it, and that's three marks. So remember that there is a, a human being at the un other end of this looking at your work, trying to give you three check marks. So everything you do, please present it in an easy to follow, understandable way. That'll help you get the marks. That will also help you exploit the own figure rule, which means if you have an error in one of your workings, if the result is incorrect, it's assumed correct for the rest of your work. That way you're not punished twice, okay? So we need some information in order to establish a demand function, and that information is right here, okay? We understand that for every increase of $15 in price, demand drops by 100 units. Okay, that's the first stage. That will give us the B. The second stage is if the company sets a price at 735, only 1,000 units would be demanded. So with that information, we can get to work. So. I'm in the ACCA spreadsheet tool that you know and love. In the applied skills exams, you will have the scenario on the left panel. You'll have the spreadsheet on the right. You'll have the information that we looked at a moment ago handy to copy into your, into your answer. And you know when we're doing the demand equation, the first step is to get that gradient, right? The B. And we know that the B is equal to the change in price over the change in quantity. Okay, so we have those numbers, so we just have to plug them in using the spreadsheet functionality. So for every change in price of $15, they say demand will drop 1,000 units. So there it is. The 0 0.015, that's the B, everybody. And now we know the formula for the demand equation, guys, and what is that? That is that the price is equal to A minus B Q, a linear equation. And now that we have B, we know that the price at 735, we have a demand of 1,000. So just to get organized, I can write that formula here. It'll be easier for me to, to do the math if I can visualize what I'm working for. So we know that 735 is equal to A minus 0 0.015 okay, times 1,000, everybody. Now that we can see the equation, it's going to be easier for me to build my spreadsheet formula. So that's going to be equal. I can do open an equal sign, and that will be 735 minus the negative 0 0.015 multiplied by 1,000. And because we're mixing subtraction and multiplication. Let's use some brackets just to make sure that works out okay. And we got 750. There we go. And let's tell the marker that that is A. A is equal okay, to 750. 
There it is, looking nice and pretty. Guys, there are no marks for financial modeling, no marks for spreadsheet skills, no marks for formatting. So do not go crazy trying to make a beautiful, the prettiest financial model you've ever made. You will not earn any marks for that. So that is plenty good enough for the marker to see what we're doing to solving for A. Now that we've calculated those variables, let's give the marking team what they're looking for, that demand equation. So, okay, that demand equation is P equals 750 minus 0.015 Q. Guys, there we go. Three straightforward calculation marks. Let us move our discussion to part A2. Calculate the marginal cost. That marginal cost, just a fancy way of saying variable cost, the cost of producing one more unit, after adjusting the labor cost as required for the learning curve. That's six marks, guys. That is potentially the trickiest part of this question. So if we jump in here, do we have everything we need to tackle a learning curve type of problem? Sure we do. Okay, look at this. Unit number one took 1.5 hours. Labor costs $8 per hour. We know the learning curve is 95%, and they always give us that learning coefficient. So there it is. That's going to save us a lot of time, the learning coefficient that goes with the 95% learning curve. Okay, and they tell us now that the learning curve ends at 100 units. So <clears throat> the learning curve becomes a steady state after the time per unit becomes a steady state after 100 units. So we should base our costing on the time of the 100th unit. Okay, let's get busy in the spreadsheet tool solving part A2. Let us now get started on A2 and we need to find the marginal cost for the air conditioners or the variable cost which has two pieces materials and labor so let's uh, get the labor out of the way using the learning curve formula so in order to do this we're going to take it in three steps okay so step one let's get the total time for 100 units yes okay now step two then will be the total time for 99 air conditioners. And if we subtract the third one from the other, we get to final the final step here. That would be the time for unit number 100. Okay? And that's my template. Let's go downstairs and we can now use different workings for this. So, step one, 100 units. And we can use that learning curve formula, which is Y, the average cost right, per unit, average time per unit, excuse me, is equal to the time of number one multiplied by the number of units we're doing raised to the power of that learning rate. Okay, so we're going to use that formula and we'll solve for the y. So the average time per unit. So the average time per unit will be equal to 1.5, that's the time for number one, multiplied by 100 units raised to the power of that very precise negative 0 0.0 Seven, four, one, two, three zeros and a five. There we go. Okay. That's the average time per unit. So now we need the total time for 100, and that will simply be equal to 100 units multiplied by this. Okay. 
look at that making quick work of this so if I zoom out for a minute let's use the power of the relative cell addresses so that's going to be step one is equal to this right over there to that cell B20 now watch how much time we can save with the copy paste my favorite part of working in the spreadsheet tool you can go down to there now all we have to do is carefully change this out to be for 99 units change this to 99 Change this to 99 and change that to 99. Yes, every some of you are saying, yes, there's a more elegant way to do that. We could have made a relative cell showing the number of units. I agree with you. In a perfect situation, we could have done that. But remember, there are no marks for financial modeling. If there's a problem with your result, the markers will look into your cell and check your formula. So I'm just going to keep it moving quickly and maybe do things manually instead of perfectly to save time. Come back here and that will be equal to, I'm going to put that negative just so I could do a sum function here. Look at that. Okay. So using relative cell addressing, I have plugged those workings into the the template now final step everybody you can put a underline there control u and that will be equal to the sum of that guys it's starting to look a little bit cluttered there are no marks for formatting but just so it's easier on my my eyes and i like to help the marker i'm going to put that to two decimal places Okay, there we go. It's looking really nice. So let's let's make quick work of this. So I'll just move over here to the to the right so that it's easy for the marker to see what I'm doing. We can come over here now and do the marginal cost per unit. Okay, and we know that we have some direct materials. We also have some labor. And then we can do the, the total will be that marginal cost. So they tell us in the story, direct materials cost 42. Okay. And we know that the labor rate is $8 an hour. So that's going to be equal to eight multiplied by this time per unit right there. The time for number 100 and put an underline there to show a total and that will be equal to the sum of this okay looking a little messy let's uh use a consistent formatting for the decimal places so let's come here okay looking great guys now i can do make that bold and look at that we've completed a2 very quickly, very efficiently with the spreadsheet tool, with the power of relative cell addressing, with some copy pasting to save time. Now, let's wrap this up. The third part of this, equate the marginal cost and the marginal revenue in order to calculate the optimum price and quantity. Okay, so that's the grand finale to our, our question there. And let us jump into that right now in the spreadsheet tool and make a quick work of that. So the first thing we need to do is find the profit maximizing quantity with the marginal revenue equation. So to get that, we start with that demand equation if you remember we did that upstairs demand equation okay and we said that that demand equation was p is equal to 750 minus 0 0.015 q now to get the marginal revenue equation we just double that gradient the b so the marginal revenue equation okay will be equal to 
to 750 minus 0 0.03, 15 times 2 is 30 Q. And you can remember from your studies and from classical economics that the profit is maximized when the marginal revenue, that's the revenue earned from one more selling one more unit, is equal to the marginal cost. That's the cost of producing one more unit. And we know that the marginal cost is the variable cost, which we found in cell E17. So the profit maximizing quantity can be found with the 49.91, right? That's the variable cost from upstairs is equal to 750 minus 0 0.03Q. So I like to see the equation written out. Now I know how to do the, the algebra once I, I see it and I need to solve for, for Q. Q, everybody, will be equal to 750, that's the A, minus cell E17, you remember? That cell E17 is that marginal cost from upstairs. Okay, let's put that in brackets. Divide all of that by 0 0.03. There we have the profit maximizing quantity. Final step, let us turn that into a profit maximizing price. And we can go back to that first demand equation. We said that the price is equal to 750 minus 0 0.015Q. Now we have the Q right there. So P, everybody, equal to 750 minus 0 0.015 multiplied by cell B31. Let's use some brackets just to preserve the order of operations, just to make sure we're good. And that should be a 39.95. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the solution for A3. Get a profit maximizing quantity and a profit maximizing price. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Make sure you practice this once more at home watching your time management and good luck with your upcoming performance management exam everybody bye for now